Okay, so well, that's not that's not so far me now. Fuck off, General Teddy, bro. Yeah, we're continuing Akiko's shit, so let's do this shit, bro. Honestly, for the most part, well, at least when it came to some forecasts, it's mostly like cookie cutter shit, bro. It feels like, except with some slight differences. The only unique ones I really had were Kanji, Naoto, and the Persona 3 cast, bro. See Acknowledging it. As valid target. Acknowledge is my foot in your ass, bro. So yeah, man. See, the Jote is firing something on the other side of his monitor. I have to watch it stop. He be making as a valid target, bro. You talking about me? What do you mean by valid target? Irregularity has occurred. Multiple intruders detected. Emergency. Emergency. Oh, I know. I just had a fun idea. <laughs> what? I'm not gonna read the text as much, bro. Because there's a lot of reading in between, like, every one or two times that a person speaks, bro, in this game, bro. It's not like Persona 5, how, I mean, it's not like the main Persona games where you have spoken dialogue for much of the sh for a while, and then only some parts of it is, you had to read out, bro. John Teddy was speaking like a normal person. Why or something cuts out? Seriously, who is this guy? The least for sure is that this is is that I need information right now. I learned over I lean over Teddy Teddy's flat by and lion the tap back in the head. Hey Teddy Teddy, wake up. No! Kanji! You're crushing me to death! What's going on with this hey, size head? Wake up! Max Teddy Teddy a little more forcefully this time. I was worried that it might take him, it might make him even flatter, flatter but that's the rest I'm willing to take. <laughs> like, he, he did the trick. Yeah, he got up, whatever weird stomach muscles he has, and yelled at me from flat, hey! to his flat state. Hey! This is getting to be a pain. Tape purses his lips and looks away for the house. I want to demonstrate my sincerity with my fist. There's no doubt that I did that. I think I'm concerned how badly flying he is right now. I guess it's understandable that he doesn't want to talk to me. Well, maybe I went a little too far. Let me at least talk to you. I have important business here too. I need as much information as I can get. And honestly, I began to show less and less interest of Snow 4 Arena, you know, bruh, as time goes on, bruh. Aren't you going to say sorry? Don't push your luck. I'll pull out all your fur. Like, I really want to get to Ultimax, bruh. As apart from the story on arcade modes, what else is there really to do, bruh? Well, it's story mode. I still have story mode, so yeah. I was just joking! Hey, I'm the one who won, dumbass. Where does he get off with that with his attitude? It doesn't feel right. Playing that slide, but I don't want him to get all pouty again. I take a deep breath and turn to face Teddy. T Teddy, I mean Teddy once more. First off, what kind of world is this? This, it's the TV world. The very least, I was right about that. Teddy then went on to explain that there is a mystery TV program called Man Child that only appears at midnight. The TV broadcast 
is caused by the world inside the TV. Huh? It's either tell you it's back to his original appearance or by his original thickness. It's like a big stress ball. That's hard to believe. But even if that's true, why does it look like this? Is this supposed to be a school or something? This is probably the school that Yosuke and the others go to. It's a real place? This world changes whenever someone comes here. I'm not sure why it's a school now, though. It changes when the people come here. I used to live here for a long time, so I saw it happen a lot. You lived here? Well, does that mean you're from this world? What are you? <laughs> That's, uh... Tay starts climbing up all of a sudden. He started getting nervous when I blot out the realization that he was living in this world and he wasn't human. Embarrassed about being different from humans, huh? He definitely doesn't look human, but it's easy enough to overlook because he's able to easily carry on a conversation with me. And his fist definitely had a heart. I guess Billy sprints to mine. She's a machine, but she also has the same heart as, as a person. Though this Teddy creature may be some kind of costume creature, he must have a heart as well. That being said, he does look pretty stupid. Ugh, there's so much I don't understand. But I can at least say I'm pretty sure you're no threat. Of course not. I've never caused anyone any trouble. But you know this world so well. Does the name Fifth Generation Labrys sound familiar? I've never heard of it. Every day's great at Junetis. I usually spend my time there. But when I came to, I was locked up here. I managed to escape, though. Only to find that an imposter Teddy was causing a bunch of trouble with his E1 Grand Prix. It pumped out a minute ago, and now his face is bright, and there's steam power pouring out his head. This guy is a real, is a real pain in the ass, bro. showed up on screen looked exactly like you. He calls himself a general. But don't confuse me for that phony. The real titty is made of all natural bear fur. What if your shits are are factual, huh? <laughs> no, I just no, I just had to say that, bro. If that was someone in disguise, it must be a reason he's trying to look like you. Well, that's just Yeah, it's totally obvious. I recall what Teddy said about the Mary Channel earlier. Some of the things that happen in this world are broadcast to the outside world. If that's the case, then mis misinformation gets be spread and people could be confused or misled. At this moment, I'm not sure why someone would be intentionally causing so much confusion but this Tay guy mentioned that his friends were here. If bear number two is the opposition of them to them, then it's not too big of a stretch to imagine that he's trying to be upset with All right. With One the friends. last question. You said you used to live here. You know how to get out? Of course. That was one of my specialties. I always helped other people when they needed to leave. But it's not working here for some reason. I'm losing my confidence. This is one bear of a headache. Ooh, that was an advanced joke. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. You won't be able to get out like this. That wasn't advanced at all. Sheesh. He didn't give me vulnerable information, though. I now have somewhat a rash situation. My main objective is retrieving Labyrinth and escaping from this world. I won't be able to accomplish either of these things. As it stands, to his weight. I mean, all we can do is yeah, bro. 
You can do speculate. Not me on that, bro. That's it. You're coming with me. So you now we're probably going to need this guy's help to get out of here later. I grab, excuse me, grab the bag of Teddy's head and spin forward. But just about to exit the gym, Teddy gets completely stuck on something. Behind me, Teddy is wildly flailing his arms around. I don't see anything holding him back. What the? What kind of trick hey, is this? You almost made me lose my head! Knowing that he was fussed, Teddy is making I reach o over towards where Teddy stuck. I don't feel anything. Guess I'll just have to try again. Pull the back of Teddy's head towards me at full strength. Stuck, stuck, stuck on something. For a moment, it looked like a zipper on Teddy's neck wrap. Whatever, it's probably just my imagination. Looks like there's a wall that I can get through, but you can't. What a bizarre place this is. Says the half naked cave guy who pulled in my head so hard it almost came off! Oh well, I'll have to leave you here. Make sure you don't go anywhere alone. You hear me? Can't burn any more time here. As, as I turn back to a say to be seen on, he yells echoes inside me. The door's crash reverberates through the area. When I turn around, I see a, a flying teddy fl fluttering to the ground like a sheet of paper falling off the desk. Once I've gone, a running start and slam right into where, where there's a full force. He just went straight into the invisible wall head first without even thinking about how much it will hurt. And this guy said that the general is the enemy of his friends. Just because his friends are at risk, he can't just leave everything to me. His like his like regard for personal safety may be because he's so worried about his friends. He behaves oddly, but once you look past that, I can totally empathize with him. Sorry. I'll come back for you when all this is settled. Continue there, Teddy. I know it's a tough situation. I hurry to where the enemy is for, for my mission and for the sake of Teddy and his friends. When I step outside the gym, I heard a cheer from somewhere. Voices seem to be coming from outside the school building. There are a large number of people coming to this world. This place is supposed to be the world inside the TV, but this kind of seems like a real school. It feels like an event, like like a cultural festival or field day is taking place. There's still so much about this place that I don't know. There's more many parts of Teddy's explanation that I couldn't grasp. I need a first-hand knowledge. I need to see some things with my own eyes. I step out to what looks like a school's main gate and check the nameplate. Yasugami High School. I remember seeing that name in the report on Inaba. So what Tay told me about this place being scenery made to look like an actual high school is correct. But why recreate a high school building inside TV? I'm talking stuck my surroundings, a high pitched girl's voice emanates from, from a nearby speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, what will the next match be like? Broke and confusing school enough. Man. Cheers arise from somewhere seemingly in response to the announcement. I sense the presence of others, of others, but when I look around, I notice silhouettes of students that seem to be watching from all angles. Are they human? They look like they're human, but I don't sense any life from them. No matter where in the world I went, people who were excited about this battle had a certain spark to them. And these guys don't have it. Wow, this is one fired up crowd. Hi everyone. I, Miss S, will be your commentator. But first, the general would like to say a few words. The mic's all yours, sir. Now 
the answer, if, if, if I was, as if I answered the question, I want to set up the center of turns on. That general Teddy appears on the screen. Well then, I'm proud to behind a monitor? It's about time you showed up in person. I'll crush you. Nope, sorry, but on your phone for a cheap boy like that, you better follow the rules. Allow me to explain. The Keyword Grand Prix is a one-on-one -on -one battle. Those who are paired off must fight. Only the winner may move on. Well, I move on. Did that little wall that Teddy ran into his face must be the part of the contest this guy set up. <laughs> Interesting. Who are you gonna make me fight? It's our last place. The original screen switches. Let's show up next scene to be our commercial for a PR Grand Prix. So if this the video for this event, does it mean everyone will the care is willing to participate? Most of it they seem ordinary students. I just don't think, I just don't think everyday students like this would be involved in hijacking an airplane and st stealing a flabber squad. Who are they? I don't have to answer that. Sorry, but I don't have time for politics. I'm taking back Labrys. You are? Joe on the screen looks shocked by my words. He was, he been, he been, Evasive, or just laughed at anything I, I said until now. But this obviously s stuck a nerve. Don't think everything's gonna be that easy for you. You all should suffer and suffer and then suffer some more. I'm not exactly sure w what specifically antagonized him, but it seems like he definitely knows something about Labrys. I think you think. You can make me suffer, huh? Well, bring it on. I flourish my cape and head into the school building. It won't be easy, huh? I think about what General said a moment ago. Honestly, I can't really think of too many times in my life when things went exact easily. Growing up as an orphan, my memories of losing what was pressed to me I've never gone to burden by it, but I've constantly been pitted by others for my misfortunes. Whatever. I never expected it to be. Pain of loss is my source of determination. I must stay strong in order to protect those who are precious and by my side right now. See through the school building and after climbing a number of stairs, I know I know something odd. This place is bigger on the inside than what it looks on the outside. Always don't turn in the direction you expect to see after the back down to see on the outside of the building. And the way the classrooms connected with each other is bizarre this as well. This is what I figure another world would be like. I reach towards the upcoming corner. And I come in contact with a visible wall. I see, so this is what prevented Teddy from following me. I couldn't have done much either, but now I can actually touch it. <laughs> Nothing, bro. Pulling my strength into a strike with the wall barely gave it all. Yeah, so basically, the wall, the invisible wall, no cells, Akiko's punch, bro. So yeah, man. Yeah, it's not worth it, Akiko. It's best if you just follow the path, bro. So yeah, man. I knew it. Whoever set this up only thought about blocking people's paths. Anywhere there already was a real wall got overlooked. I'm not obligated to play by enemy's gimmicks. They want me to go one way. Maybe I can gain my advantage by taking 
Well, I'll just go another way. My hand out the window frame and jumped outside. Okay, so that's it for today's video, guys. Wow, Jesus Christ. An entire episode of School for Arena without an actual fight? Like, damn, bro. You might wonder. Yes, and yes, that's true. It's damn true, bro. So, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Brian TV, sign off.